So good to see you tonight. Going to be here together to worship together. Um, why do we call a thing good? What is it that we are saying when we say that thing is good? Uh, the definition of good is this to be desired or approved of good. Good, having the qualities required for a particular role. That which is morally right, righteous, it's good. Good, benefit or advantage to someone or something. We call something good because we like it or we desire it. That meal was good, that cheeseburger was good, that song was good. It seems right to us, not bad, but morally right and righteous. We say something is good because it accomplishes something for us. It serves us in some way or serves someone else. And today is Good Friday. Why have Christians throughout history come to call this day good? My 12-year-old little girl ran up to me this, after, or this morning and she said, wasn't today the day that Jesus died? And I said, yeah, babe, today's the day that Jesus died on the cross. And she said, then why is it good? Why is it good? Briefly, I wanna talk and walk us through the events of this day almost 2,000 years ago to talk about the goodness that we find. In Matthew chapter 26, we read of a meal that Jesus had with his friends, with his disciples. They're eating good food and he is encouraging them. He is teaching them. He's sharing his heart with, him, with them and he is showing them what's to come. He has spent years with them. They've seen what he is like. They've seen his heart. They've seen his character. They've seen the way that he's prayed. They, they've seen the way that he's touched the eyes of the blind and they've been opened. They've seen the way that the earth has shook with every st step that he took. They've seen him. And now at this meal, he's pulling all things together for him, for them, encouraging them, showing them what's to come. And John writes in John chapter 13, verse 21, Jesus becomes troubled. It says, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified. Very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. He was troubled in the depth of his soul, troubled in spirit because a friend was going to betray him. A friend that he was sharing a meal with at that very moment was going to betray him. And he's eating with this friend. Jesus is betrayed. Have you known or experienced the pain of betrayal? The pain of someone giving you their word and not keeping it. It is incredibly painful. It is incredibly exposing and squeezing all of these emotions of friendship and trust and shared experience and expectation come raging to the surface. Have you ever been betrayed? Jesus has. He ate with those who would one day turn on him. After dinner, Jesus takes all, all but Judas, who left, and he takes them to the Garden of Gethsemane where he would often pray. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 36, we read, Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. But he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to his friends, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here with me and keep watch with me. Jesus is overwhelmed. Jesus is anxious. Jesus is afraid. Jesus is filled with sorrow to the point of death. He knows what's to come, the pain to come, and he can't handle it. Have you experienced overwhelmingness, the deep pain, the deep sorrow? When you were told 
your mom and I are getting a divorce. Maybe when you were told we can't find the heartbeat, the baby has passed. Maybe it's granddad and he doesn't have much longer. Or the cancer's back and there's no hope. Have you endured some level of overwhelming grief, pain, fear, and loss? And just wanted someone to sit with you and keep watch. Watch after me because I am empty. Have you been there? Jesus has. Going a little farther, verse 39. Jesus fell on his face to the ground and he prayed, Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and he found them sleeping. Couldn't you friends keep watch with me for just an hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh, my flesh is weak. He went away a second time and he prayed, Father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away from me unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found his friends sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away at once more and prayed a third time saying the same thing. Jesus is in this moment of pain, of anguish, of sorrow. He is looking for anyone anywhere who will sit with him, who will help him, who will support him, who will pray with him and he's lonely and he's afraid of what's next. He's asked others for help and they can't muster up the strength to just be with him, to just pray with him. They don't feel what he feels. Jesus is alone. Have you ever experienced loneliness? Have you ever felt like no one wants to sit with you? Jesus has. Then, on early Friday morning, as Jesus is praying, Thursday turns into Friday around 2 a.m. Jesus sees lights coming in the distance. Soldiers arrive to the place that Jesus was praying and they arrest him. Jesus is arrested unjustly. He's pulled from place to pay, place as he's interrogated and intimidated. He is tired. He is overwhelmed, but he's focused. At 5 a.m. in the morning, Jesus is drug between blind religion and political power. And an order is given for him to be scourged. Jesus is bloodied and beaten. He's likely blindfolded, struck with a rod. He's mocked, he's spit on, he's tied to a pole where he is whipped. Jesus is bleeding and he is broken when they thrust a crown of thorns on his head. Pilate brings Jesus before the crowd, stands him up in front of everyone and says, behold the man, behold. A mob has formed and all the anger and hatred and vitriol and pain and suffering comes all unleashing on Jesus. And Jesus endures this. Have you? Have you ever been in a place where you've experienced abuse? A violent home or a violent partner or experienced the unthinkable? Have you ever been publicly mocked, humiliated? Have you ever been, have you ever experienced scrutiny or anger or shame? Jesus has. It's about 6.30 in the morning and the order is given to crucify Jesus. In John's gospel, he says this, Pilate took Jesus and he had him flogged. The, so the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and placed it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and they went up to him again and again saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, 
I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. Hasn't he endured enough? When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, crucify, crucify. But Pilate answered, you take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. Jesus then is made to carry a cross up to a hill called Golgotha. He is laid out on the cross. Nails are driven through his hands and his feet. He is impaled on a tree and he is lifted up. For three hours, he hangs there. He suffers there. He stands face to face with those who have made hope and life and truth and grace their enemy. Jesus suffers. And then he cries, it is finished. And he breathes his last breath. He dies. How is any of this good? Why do they call this day good? The Son of God betrayed by a friend. The Son of God overwhelmed and with sadness, loneliness, and fear. The Son of God arrested, bloodied, beaten, mocked. The Son of God suffering. The Son of God crucified. The Son of God dead. How is any of this good? We call Good Friday good because, number one, we are not alone in our sufferings. Jesus has. Jesus has endured all of the pain, all of the fear that you and I could ever endure. We see God come to us fully in Jesus, experience all the things just like us. God empathizes with your pain. God can meet you in your suffering. God can meet you in your shame. That is good. That is good. We call Good Friday good because at the cross, we see the absolute worst of humanity. We see all of the pain and all of the suffering that we can inflict on one another, all of the hatred, all the, all the division, all the violence, all the, all the lies, all of the sin hurled at Jesus. And then we see God take all of it, absorb all all of it, all the sin, all the violence, all the suffering and the death, and notice his response. Jesus reciprocates love and forgiveness and hope. He cries in Luke chapter 23, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. We are not alone. And we see the love of God fully on display in Jesus, fully represented at the cross. Last, we see that our sin is finished. We see our shame is done. We see a hope for eternity, and this is good. Isaiah 53, three through six says this of Jesus, he was despised and abandoned by men, a man of great pain and familiar with sickness and like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we had no regard for him. However, it was our sicknesses that he himself bore and our pains that he carried. Yet we ourselves assume that he had been afflicted, struck down by God and humiliated, but he was pierced for our offenses. He was crushed for our wrongdoings. The punishment for our well-being was laid upon Jesus. And by his wounds, we are here. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned his own way. But the Lord has caused the wrongdoing of us all to fall on him. This is why Good Friday is good. God is with us in our pain. We are not alone. God loves us. 
And when he was receiving our worst, he gives us his great grace. And our sin and shame are dead on the cross. This is why Good Friday is good. The wrongdoing of us all has fallen on him. The worst of us was met with his grace. It is finished. Hallelujah. Jesus has made a way for hope. 1 Peter 2, 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Do you see it? It is good. Romans 5 says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It is good. Do you see it? Jesus has. Jesus will. Jesus loves. And Jesus has finished it.